Hey, welcome back to the Real Estate Excellence Podcast. Your host, Tracy Hayes. I have the leader, a leader in the house of the number one real estate brokerage in Northeast Florida and certainly the fastest growing. She will be an icon in St. Augustine real estate for decades to come. Coaching and mentoring the newest of agents is her superpower. At a very young age, she has given birth to many good and great real estate agents that she has worked with. Let's welcome the broker of the DJ and Lindsay Real Estate Brittany Nolan to the show. Thank you. Thanks thank, for having me. Thank you for finally coming on. I'm really excited about this. I, um, I've had some, uh, um, a, a lot of very uh, young um, real estate industry professionals. You're, you're now, you're, you're really, are you actually going out and listing and, and working with buyers agents yourself now? Or are you more managing as, as a broker? Yeah, I'm completely out of production. Out of production. Yep. Okay, so obviously I've had a lot of real estate agents. So I'm really, really curious. I'm going to dig in to you. And maybe you don't know the answer. Maybe you have to get DJ Lindsay on the, on the podcast to actually find out the true answer. <laughs> but I really want to find out. There's something in you, obviously, they saw. I mean, because they have a, just a, an amazing operation that they run. And to put put you in charge of a lot of it. That's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. It's making me nervous talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you actually break down the numbers, there's, the, I mean, how, I mean, you're, you're, are you 30 yet? I'm 30. You're 30. Yeah, I, thought, I, I made thought, it. I thought I saw something on Facebook where <laughs> you had a birthday party or something yep. like that. So I was going to, I was going to guess 30, but I didn't want to, okay, we're there. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, at the age of 30 mm -hmm. and, you know, when you look at the volume and the, you know, the dollars that of production and you compare it to say other industries there you're on a very short list of people who have that you know that great of responsibility on a, on a day-to-day -day basis yeah um i i mean i think it just when we started um i was their first hire so i think it just transitioned from trust and you know doing everything collaboratively we work really well together um not to say they've completely relinquished everything and just Hey, go around the business. They're very mm -hmm. much involved still, but I don't. I don't know why. I mean, I think. Uh, well, I, I mean, I don't know why they chose chose me necessarily, but. Um, I don't think it's a, a position anyone can do, um, but obviously, you obviously have a similar ideology that they yeah, were growing absolutely. up there. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's important, mm -hmm. but I think the biggest word is trust. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, I think uh, that they know they can it. say, hey, we want to go this direction and you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, absolutely. Trust and, you know, the collaboration is really big. We really respect each other um, in and outside of business. So that helps a lot, obviously. But um, I mean, I think coming into it when none of us really knew what we were doing, it was just having the trust right away to, we'll try this, we'll try that. Um, that was the only way to kind of get where we are now because we didn't know what was yeah. going to work. Well, and it's it's been a, a, I mean, really think about it, in, in a very short period of time. I mean, I mean it, it, rel relatively speaking, when you yeah. look at other, you know, uh, we talked earlier, like Keller Williams or these big, yeah. thing, how, uh you know, DJ Lindsay, now they're DJ Lindsay Real Estate, mm -hmm. and the volume and the production, the, you know, it's, uh, I'll use the term machine that you, mm -hmm. you guys have there, your processes. Yeah. Yeah, are, are just amazing, uh, and, and, and I'm sure you're always constantly improving, so we'll talk about a little bit that. Yeah. But let's talk a little bit about you. <laughs> let's get everyone a little bit of background. Uh, where are you from? So originally, I'm from uh, kind of the Sanford area, Osteen, Florida, very small Mm -hmm. um, kind of out in the trees, very, very small town. I, I did a brief stint at Deltona High School back in like okay. 2000. It was during the Bush Gore election. I think yeah. it was 21. I think we, you were probably about 11 years old at the time. <laughs> yeah, so I was born <laughs> in Deltona, okay. grew up in Osteen, and then in 2010 moved to St. Augustine. Okay, all right. And you went to Flagler? I went to Flagler, yep. Was that you looked at different colleges or you just love St. Augustine? What was it about Flag that brought you there? Um, kind of a combination. I looked at a few different schools. Um, SCAD in Savannah was a big consideration. And uh, Rollins, I played soccer. So that kind of guided some of it. And mm -hmm. my brother actually was at St. Augustine. We're very close. So I decided to take a leap in Flagler. And it was, you know, to me, it was very comfortable already. 
Uh, um, so. I'm gonna I'm gonna put something out there. Mm -hmm. uh, this is slightly off channel, but you mentioned that your athletics and playing soccer, and I know the DJ and Lindsay team are very involved with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mm -hmm. um, when is Flagler gonna get a football team? <laughs> They, I, I, I'm, I am. I dead was just serious. thinking about that. We're pretty good at all the rest of the sports, and we're growing significantly. Now, yeah, ex well, exactly. The college really has no room to grow, other than unless they start growing on the other side of ninety-five. <laughs> but uh, I think I really think they could build a, an athletic facility on the on the west side of ninety-five. There's room, um, you know, mm -hmm. and a nice stadium uh, for the county, much like Daytona has uh, mm -hmm. their stadium where uh, Bethune Cookman plays. Yep, and uh, I think it would take flagger to a whole nother level just like unf but they keep fumbling the ball too <laughs> so all right just a little side note there flagger should have a football team um you i for your i think was it communications was your degree if yeah I, my yeah. degree was in communications mm -hmm. i they actually got rid of my um actual field it was print journalism and right after i graduated it turned into multimedia which made Way more sense mm -hmm. for yeah. <laughs> where the world actually is. Um, but, yeah, I loved writing, uh, loved directing, didn't love being on camera, still don't love it, but coming to terms with uh, it. <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> you just do it. <laughs> you just do it. <laughs> just do it. I can always tell people, you you, you, you know what, you, you have your family and friends, they love you no matter what you do, so just yeah. go out there and just do it. Winging and, it. And uh, the other followers will come on. Um how and do you? I mean, is some of the stuff you picked up? I I know um, Luke uh, uh, newcomer newcomer. Mm -hmm. He is uh, he actually does appreciate his time at Flagler, mm -hmm. uh, even though he will tell you the story. He kind of just landed there, um, but what he learned there and what's like because I think communications and all the, all the things you were talking about mm -hmm. is very important in, in what we do in the in, in the real in marketing our real estate mm -hmm. services Absolutely. so i mean do you pull some stuff there i mean there is there professors there you remember that kind of taught you a couple of things that still resonate with you um i mean i definitely i'm not quite in that field we have a whole department that's more or less in that field but when i was more in production i mm -hmm. do feel i used it a lot more yeah. um just as even something as small as writing the descriptions for all the listings things like that um everything kind of helped but there's no not one person that sticks out because I didn't really fall into the field I thought I was going to well, fall I'm gonna, into. I'm going <laughs> to challenge you with your with your statement you just made there a little bit. Okay, uh, Brett does not do all the talking, does he? Brett does all the talking. Brett does all the talking. I've, I've been hiding you're, for you're, seven you're, years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not out there. I, I I catch his morning show probably a couple times yeah. a couple times a week. I'm, I'll catch it fast enough to where it truly is live. Yeah. Um, when it'll pop up and I'll just see what he's got to say. Mm -hmm. So he he you kind of let him do the um, uh, motivation of the troops, so to yep. speak. Yeah, I mean I'll I'll pipe in where it's specific things that I have come up with or what have you. I don't mind speaking. Um, mm -hmm. I like to know what I'm speaking about. I don't like the pressure of like, you know, more power to him to just think of something really powerful every single day to talk about. Um, don't love that part, but he, well, for the uh, most part, well, he teaches the classes too. As a leader though, communication, mm -hmm. um, and, and as you go on and, and, and is, is a big Mm -hmm. importance so whether whether you're communicating to the public or mm -hmm. communicating to the 75 agents you have right um and how you're doing mm -hmm. that so and, and uh, you're i'm i'm sure you're uh dj and Lindsay's whether it's coaching or whatever mm -hmm. that you're you're constantly uh staying abreast because how important yeah. that little piece is just as as the leadership piece is mm -hmm. right yeah uh, in the uh making that up okay so you you do some Waiting stuff at the winery by Rick Ridge or I used LinkedIn. To. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. But yeah. Because you kind of overlap where you're you're still at Flagler and then you you know, you're doing like any young person does. You go out and you try to make some money and you're working yeah. at the winery. I was um, working at um, three different places when I started with DJ Lindsay. Is that right? Because I well I, you know, when you play a sport your whole life and then you go to college and then it, it's just gone. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of time. So I was Lindsay always says I was collecting jobs. Kind of was. <laughs> I did a lot of things. So I was at the winery. I was um, at surf station. I was um, at another big box brokerage. I was doing a lot of stuff just to kind of fill the time. And right. then, um, <clears throat> and just work ethic. My parents instilled a very strong um, work ethic well, in me. <laughs> so you, when you were at Flagler, mm -hmm. did you, I mean, 
did you have kind of a vision of what you wanted to do? Or what are some of the, the careers that went through your... No, I was completely... Uh, no clue. Just rolling with but the punches. I was just rolling with the punches. <laughs> I mean, I had no idea. I really didn't think past soccer. Right. Um, and then I really liked the creative side of it, but that kind of ended when I chose Flagler over SCAD. Um, so didn't know. It's, I was ready well, to pack I, my I, bags I, and move wherever. <laughs> well, you're no different, I think, than the majority of people going to college right now. Uh, oh, yeah. Or, and have been. I have mean, been, even yeah. 30 years ago, I'm going to my 30th reunion year in a couple months. I mean, mm -hmm. you, know, you go through and you're like, you're just focused on, like you said, you're playing soccer. And then it's like, okay, I got to pass these classes. I yep. got to graduate. And that's as far as you can see. The rest of that's it's it. just like right this, there. Yeah, <laughs> um, type of thing. So you get, so who... You said you were working at Burgers. What? Who introduced you? How did you fumble into? Uh, I use the word fumble because it sounds like you kind of just. I literally fumbled. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't in, know in how I landed estate. here. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I was an assistant, um, and I don't, you know, I don't want to name drop or anything mm. too crazy, but it was a big, bo big box brokerage here, uh, all over the nation, and um, there was no real rhyme or reason, but I, um, I don't know. I just kind of randomly got my license. I didn't have to. Um, I actually it was Were you working there as like some admin or something? At the um, time? Kind of. Yeah. I was an assistant. Okay. So doing a lot of um, unlicensed work. Right. And then uh, I kind of wanted to do more. So I went and got licensed, but it was not um, something they wanted me to do. <laughs> so um, kind of didn't really know what I was going to do. I posted the photo of my license on Instagram and my husband, he originally did DJ Lindsay's website. And so DJ saw my post and messaged my now husband and said, hey, she just got licensed. Does she want to join a team? And I'm like, I don't know what else I'm doing with my life. I don't even know what a team is, but love teams. Because <laughs> so. that, um, if, if, I, if I know the, if know the background, they, mm -hmm. were, they were there as well at that brokerage. No. No, they weren't there. Mm -mm. Okay. I thought one of no, them started. No, this was totally different. They were Neither both of different. them worked for that brokerage that you were talking about. Uh, I think Lindsay did a very yeah. short amount of time. Yeah, because yeah. I've heard some stories. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> not pretty, it's not her <laughs> local, big Local, local, St. Mm -hmm. Augustine mm -hmm. gossip. Mm -hmm. But okay. not at my same office. Mm -hmm. I didn't know them at all. Okay. Um, and they just blindly reached out. So it was just a relation with your now husband, or were you already married? At the no, we weren't married. Yeah, um, yeah I <clears throat> we've been together for, uh, I think this February is, or March, it's like 10, 10 years <clears throat> or so, so... Um, I mean, okay. it was literally so just Lindsay's an idea. trying to create a team. Yeah, it was just an idea they had. And they, and they saw, mm -hmm. you know, obviously they know you're, you're mm -hmm. now husband and figured, obviously, well, if he likes you, then <laughs> you must be decent. So decent. Decent enough. <laughs> bring you over there. Young enough to mold. <laughs> so do you jump right over and, and, and start immediately falling in their leadership? Now you've got your license. What happens? Yeah, so right away, uh, they both, so... The way we were set up, DJ was doing a lot of the negotiating, Lindsay was writing a lot of the offers, and I was more boots on the ground. Um, and we'd literally, I'd show a home, I'd give them to DJ to negotiate it, and he'd give them to Lindsay to write it. And we had just this circle of doing all the things together, and then gradually, you know, we all couldn't do all the things. Um, so then right off the bat, we were like, I, I can't be two places at once. Lindsay's too busy writing so many offers. DJ, so we, that was ancient city real estate. And mm -hmm. that's when we mm -hmm. had other agents in the office that weren't necessarily on our team, but we could lay leads up to and, you know, kind of all be in a big pot of leads. Um, all right. So this is very interesting. And I'm, um, and, uh, and I, I'm just hearing your story and trying to put this together. Cause the one <laughs> thing, the one thing I find very uh, amazing and I think uh, it creates some of the, uh, animosity because DJ saw it early. Lindsay saw it early. I don't know, whatever, yeah. however saw it first or whatever of what could happen. Right. One of the biggest things on this podcast of, uh, this is episode, I think 95 uh, we're on. If I've interviewed 85, 90 top agents in the area, mm -hmm. hiring their first assistant is something that like they you know hey I should have done it two years oh, earlier yeah. type of thing. Mm -hmm. They they push themselves and push themselves, and, and it's just amazing to me just hearing that quick little story and it just triggers a thought in my head that they brought you on and immediately they started creating a right system, mm -hmm. maximizing everyone's strength. Uh, strength, mm -hmm. you know your 
young and green at the time. They're a little more experienced. You're out there showing the house. They're doing the more technical stuff on the back end, mm -hmm. and then all, and then it just starts this circle. Mm -hmm. So I'm really curious to how this, this, uh, this little triumvirate <laughs> uh, grows. Mm -hmm. So from that, that is that's very interesting uh, part there. Um, what? So you're you're. How long was it? Just the three of you? Did that, did that long? That last very long before you were already starting hiring others? It all kind of blend. And, so um, and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. um, and then, you know, we had the hurricanes in the mix. We ha we've had mm. so many things that kind of halted, pivoted. Right. Um, but we did bring on um, at one of, at the time, one of DJ's best friends to partner with me. Mm -hmm. um, Adam, he was with us for a little while. I would say maybe two years in, we brought him on and he was exactly the same as me. We, but then we were partners, could work the same customers, kind of pass things back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, and then... Actually, I think then the hurricanes hit, yeah. and we our office flooded the first time, um, and it was in Davis Shores, so it flooded pretty bad. Mm -hmm. um, fixed it, got back in there, flooded again, and then that's when I, we were just randomly like, hey, I'll just move to Jacksonville. Um, so I bought a house in Neptune Beach, and then at that time, Adam wasn't my partner anymore, so we, um, I got very much uh, back in production, but we, we decided, like, why can't we have, Ten of those people that all work together versus just um, partners. We're just we're all partners. All mm. hundred of us are partners. Right. Um, so we moved up to the office in Jacksonville and then slowly reopened St. August. Are are you guys? You're, this period goes on. Mm -hmm. You're you're got. The, I got a couple questions about the hurricanes because obviously we have this storm coming here. I ask. I ask the, there it is. Because I have the, uh, one sorry. question here. I want to hold off for a second, <laughs> but I'm, I'm trying to really dig in mm -hmm. to. The brainchild here. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm trying to dig in, and and get, you know you're the you know I assume DJ and Lindsay probably have you by a decade in age, right? I mean I don't know I don't know how old they are. Not right? a decade. Not, they're not that much older. No. I just, well, I just, <laughs> don't tell them. They're in their thirties. <laughs> DJ looks older. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> Lindsay, you look great. <laughs> Thirty-two. Um, th uh, is she that yet? How I'm old? not telling you. No, you're not, I'm not, you're not telling me. But she's a little older than you. Yeah, yeah she's, yeah, she's old. definitely yeah, a little, a little bit. Slightly older. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to like really dig into this brainchild you guys are having. You, yeah. You're, you're, you're seeing something like you said. You, you recommended, mm -hmm. hey, why don't we just, you know, hire, a, you know, a core. Let's go to like ten agents. Yeah. And you know, we, we've got this. If we can do it one time in. with me. Right. We can do it. Let's Many duplicate times. it. Let's just keep duplicating it. We have the system. And isn't that? I mean, that is the key to doing the volume that you're doing mm -hmm. is the process. Mm -hmm. You know, if, uh, you know, DJ and Lindsay said, hey, I want to get, I want to sell my real estate. They're selling the process. That's what's yeah. selling. That's the value in it. Mm -hmm. um, and the processes that are established in, in you executing in that, and everyone executing in that mm -hmm. whole circle of things. How, do, I mean, are you guys have, you guys regularly like meeting and having like brain chows? So how does how do you evolve and start to grow this these thoughts and these visions? Yeah, I mean uh, communication. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we do have a very open form of communication. You know, um, all with the purpose of needing to pivot. Um, so usually, if we see an issue or we see a struggle or something, you know, we we all talk about it pretty regularly. We have uh, meetings with our leaders, with DJ included, once a week, and then we have a meeting with myself and our leaders once a week. And then, you know, we have a lot of, a lot of communication getting together. We also frequently meet with like our preferred lenders, our preferred title company, all the different um, areas. But, um, I guess because, and I, and maybe you know, DJ or Lindsay or both, mm -hmm. they, you know, something, either a vision came to their mind, mm -hmm. which obviously you absorbed into it. And obviously I, I obviously, you know, you, know, you inputted, into it, what you have today, mm -hmm. you know, something started because I think what um, I guess what I'm digging after is what what is what is what they're doing. I feel is mm -hmm. bold. Uh, you know, they're going they're going out there. That's why you have a lot of um, you know I, I hear you know some naysayers. Well, that's the way they want to run their real estate business. Let me tell you, if I've had like I said, if I have 85, 90 agents on here, you guys all run your business differently. Yeah, and and uh, you know how you do your teams and so forth. He run, that's how they run their business. And he's, you've mastered it by the processes and what just, uh, my curiosity uh, just is how those, how that actually evolved. 
Did he see someone else doing it or I'm sure he stole some stuff from other people because we all do. Oh, yeah, we all do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest part of it that caused, like, the evolution of it was all customer service based. Like, Mm. because I, you know, I'm not someone who's going to do it halfway and not do a good job at it. So that's where we were like, okay, this one person can only do so much. This one person can only do so much. So it slowly started to, okay, now we need another. And instead of saying, oh, Brittany needs... 10 assistants. I didn't need assistance. I just needed other people I could recreate um, and just keep duplicating exactly what we're doing. And it was all, I mean, it was all customer service based. You know, the boundaries of, okay, can't do a good job at this anymore. Where do we need to grow? What else do we need to do? Um, and it just kept going. Um, it was, it really isn't rocket science. <laughs> no, just... it, it's, it, you're, but I'll tell you what, the, you know, the fresh breeze blows through me when I hear inspirational stuff. What you're saying, the typical person, even, you know, 52 years old, still doesn't get it and wonders why they're running into a lid. Mm -hmm. I see it every, I deal with it every day in corporate America. Mm -hmm. They're like, well, when you, when you get those numbers, then I'll do that. Mm -mm. No, you can't get to those numbers. You you have to hire the right people and and trust in them Mm -hmm. that they're going to do, not because, well, now you got an assistant, so now you can take the rest of the day off. No. Well, sometimes you need to let people take the rest of the day off because tomorrow they're going to come in that much better. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and like you said, you can't overload somebody to where they're buried. Right. And now they're... they're, their own skills, their own mm-hmm. inspiration. The, I'm sure the ideas that come; those ideas typically come when you're it's quiet time, mm-hmm. right? When you're when you're driving home, yep. and you're like, "Man, I had a great day," and all of a sudden, you know, oh, I, these th- those things come. But yep. when you're hammering all the day and you're under this pressure, mm-hmm. hey, I got to get to these certain numbers because I want to get an assistant. You never get there. You never get there. But you give them the assistant because you hired the right person, knowing their worth ec- work mm-hmm. ethic and so forth. That. I don't know if you know that, but <laughs> let me tell you, if I'm listening, because I do listen to a lot of podcasts mm-hmm. and and, um, and read, you know, different people, and I'm sure even uh, Bill, I know Billy will, will back you on that, that right there, the fact that 30 years old, do you understand that? Sky's the limit for you, because you understand how to utilize people and their mm-hmm. skills and let them go do what they do and do it well. I think a lot of people have a hard time... <clears throat> recognizing their weaknesses too or admitting um i'm fine with that <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like i'm not good at that bring right. on travis bring Brett. on brett yeah, bring yeah, on yeah. all these other people um and that's when i have my time to think better and feel better and it's always when i'm blow drying my hair for some reason because <laughs> <laughs> you can't do anything else when you're blow drying your hair <laughs> but think <laughs> um but yeah i appreciate that. that that's that's actually very interesting because i think uh because you, you, what are you doing? You're in front of a mirror, typically, mm-hmm. right? You're blow drying your hair, and you're looking at looking yourself, at yourself, and you're thinking right in about the face. yeah. You, you you start to really think about yourself, mm-hmm. and like you said, you, a lot of people are not willing to uh, admit their uh, mm-hmm. weaknesses, um, and, and what, hire for them. And what were you told as an athlete, right? You you work on your weaknesses. Oh, mm-hmm. you're not you're not you know you're not good at that that pass or whatever. You need to work on that. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. At practice, you know, you should try to be a little bit better because it might come up in the game situation. But in the game, what do you have to do? You have to go work your strengths. Mm-hmm. You have to know your teammates' strengths. And when, they, when they're in that spot where they know you know they can, you know, uh, basketball's easy. When they're in the right <laughs> spot on the court and that's their favorite spot to shoot, you got to give them the ball mm-hmm. because that's where they're going to shine. And and I think in uh, we lose that in um, in a business sense of understanding whose strengths, what their strengths are, mm-hmm. and let them 10x their strengths. Yeah. And that's where everyone makes money. Yes. Uh, you, you can the, blow it up. The right people in the right places. Exactly. That's it. <laughs> the, the right people. Are the, I love the terminology. You, you have a nice bus, but the people are, are not in the right seats. you right. got to put the people in the right seats on the bus, mm-hmm. and then everything and runs you're good. Through. Yes. <laughs> that... That if anyone's listening right now, you, you know, take it uh, from Brittany, the successful DJ, and Lindsay, and, and the fact they understand it. Now, now going off of that, mm-hmm. do you guys, when you bring on agents, um, are you doing a disc assessment or a strength assessment? Are you are you digging into them and seeing what their strengths are? Yeah, I mean, um, and it depends. In a shifting market like right now, we do get a little. Uh, more in depth on the hiring and who we bring on and what they have. Um, 
But with us, we already have the systems in place, especially with the TCs. Um, so, you know, if they're, we just assume every, all agents are not good at paperwork, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we already kind of implemented some of these things. So the strengths are all pretty similar, what we're looking for in all the agents. Um, but we also know you can teach certain things. Uh, so if they're a little bit weaker on, you know, even like negotiating or things like that, we can teach. Right. Um, but if they're weak on work ethic, um, can't really teach that. You either kind of have it or you don't. You either show up or you don't. They're not really like to meet new people. That's probably not a uh, yeah, yeah, I I've been asked that in interviews. How do introverts do? And I'm like, well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, it's going to be a little tougher for you. But you know, it's not. None of it's impossible. And I think that's also kind of what we um, have really come to terms with is we can create really good agents out mm -hmm. of really young or really introverted or what have you. Sometimes it just takes a little bit longer, but with us, it's still a guarantee. Um, you might have to work a little bit harder, but it, at the end of the day, you'll still have the opportunity um, as long as you have the certain certain things. Got to have. <laughs> like, you have to want it. You have to be passionate about it. And you have to, I, I think one of the biggest struggles is showing up and doing the activities. Um, well, since we're whatever you want to because you're that. you're leading, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave my question, other question for <laughs> later. Since we're on this subject right here, <clears throat> which I I think is in, important in, in in anyone watching this and researching, maybe if they want to come and, and chat with you about joining the team, uh, you know what it what is the daily schedule? Because I, I'm assuming, I'm, and so I want you to clear up my perception here. What mm -hmm. what goes on? Um, in the machine at DJ and Lindsay Realty Real Estate, right? It's DJ mm -hmm. Lindsay Real, Real Estate. Estate. Um, what is going on there on a daily basis? So if, uh, if someone's coming in, I, I imagine you have a, a structured training period, especially mm -hmm. someone who's brand new to the business, doesn't even know what a contract even looks like. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're, you're structured that way. But then those, those agents like Theo, who's been out there a while, I mean, how do, how do things, if you want to use the term, loosen up? Yeah. Maybe not as rigid as a schedule, but what is your expectations? Because you guys are investing a lot of uh, dollars in, in, in not only in, in leads and training and so forth to make them successful. So kind of give us a picture of yeah. a new agent and then what an agent who's been there for a little bit while and is showing success, how things might loosen up for them. Yeah, I mean, it, it is all relative to the market. So I'll just give you today with things kind of shifting. Um, expectations are kind of the same for everyone as far as prospecting. Um, and every real estate coach, every, you know, team leader, what prospecting is the thing mm -hmm. you have to do it. You have to talk to as many people as possible every single day. Um, so nine to 12, um, nine to 11, if we're being flexible with the experienced mm -hmm, agents, mm -hmm. um, that's prospecting. That's it. You were just, your only goal during that time is to talk to as many people as possible, ideally 20. Um, but the more, the better. And it's, it's really not anything too crazy because we're giving them the leads and the opportunity to call and talk to. All right, so um, you're, you set up a goal to at least at least have 20 conversations. A day, yeah. A 20 conversations mm -hmm. a day. Now, as broker, manager, mm -hmm. or, you know, I know you have some support staff helping you in mm -hmm. that area. Are, are there, is there a follow-up on those on those conversations? In other mm -hmm. words, are how often are you verifying? Are you just taking the agent's word for it that they had 20 conversations? Oh, no. Accountability is high. So we mm -hmm. have systems that um, track their conversations, their dials. You know, if, if I see someone called 300 people that day but didn't have 20 conversations, I like the effort. Mm -hmm. um, you're, I'm all day for that. Right, <laughs> like right. the conversations will come. Um, but, yeah, on a daily, weekly, monthly level, we're constantly – Tracking back, um, I mean, you have to be ahead of the agents, too, because what they're working for right now is going to feel probably okay right now, but 30 days from now is where they're right. really going to feel the, the good, the bad. Um, so we're we're pretty on top of it as mm -hmm. far as that goes. If they don't show up and, you know, they're supposed to be there, so if they didn't tell us they have a closing or a, they're on vacation or whatever, if we expect that they're going to be there and they aren't, we'll follow up with them. Um, now, is your technology design, um, I imagine there's some of those people that you're feeding them the call, I, I would imagine, some say, and some yeah. of them they're pulling from Outbound. their warm circle? Or yeah, like so uh, our CRM mm -hmm. is, that's basically what we use. Um, it's it's uh, Boomtown, and then it's tied into CSU as well, which right. is um, tracks everything. So... Yeah, on a daily level, it's all, so it's all in there. are they actually, you know, I, I grew up, my, I've been in this 17 years, but 12, first 12 years was in the call center environment. From mm -hmm. from 
a quick and slash rocket to even a, you know when I originally worked for Lone Depot was mm-hmm. call center stuff. So they had literally their systems actually are recording. Or for you know for us, it's like how many credit pulls, how many minutes did you stay on the phone? Mm-hmm. Obviously, they know how many dials you made. How many you know? Even, and then if you are taking inbound calls, you know how much? How many times did you say no? I'm not available. You know, yeah. So it's tracking every sort of <laughs> second like, on, yeah. on your day. Yeah, so it's all tracked. It, inbound, you're, outbound. You're seeing those. Mm-hmm. You're seeing those as management. Seeing who's who's doing things because I, I think people don't realize um, in the business model. And correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. In the business model that DJ and Lindsay Real Estate have is um, they are investing a lot in leads to create those phone calls, mm-hmm. uh, create those, uh, or, or people to call mm-hmm. to create interactions to hopefully obviously eventually to relate to sales. And if you're going in and you're not, sh- you don't, you're not showing up or, Hey, you only feel like doing like five calls or obviously call reluctancy, whether you're a real, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter what sales in it, it everyone matter. has call reluctancy. Mm-hmm. So setting up that structure kind of helps some of those people have a little more call reluctancy that they have they have accountability. Yeah, you just okay? have to do it. Because when you take away the accountability, they're not going to do it. Yes, they're, they're not, not going to do it. it. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you after show something they're doing here, and you'll laugh because you'll – on the subject. So, all right, so you have you – ha- they're, they're expected 9 to noon or at least 9 to 11 that you want them, every mm-hmm. single one of your 75 agents – Monday through Friday. Monday through phone. Friday, I have 20 conversations yeah. a day. In the office, hitting the mm-hmm. phones. So the energy, the environment is great because it, it's not fun to do it by yourself. So mm-hmm. we're like, okay, you got to be in the office. That's where the culture, that's where the brainstorming, that's where all the really cool things kind of happen. Um, and it's not nine to five. Yeah. I, you don't have to sit behind a desk. I need you to sell homes too. So, right. you know, it's just kind of almost getting that part out of the way, beating people to the conversation. So, you know, a lot of agents don't understand that. They're like, well, it's fine. They'll call me later, but they're going to call them on their time. If you call them on your time, you can kind of structure your day a little bit better and kind of control everything else you have to do a little bit better. So we try to get that out of the way in the morning. And then the rest of the day is showings, closings. I'm going to, I'm going to go out there and I know you'll agree with this. If you're a new agent, I'm going to get to change the cameras here for a while. Um, If you are getting into this business, you are sub 30 years old you, you haven't been, you don't have all this big circle of influence because you haven't been really involved in other things or worked in another industry. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> to come in to a structured environment like this and really put your nose to the grindstone, because I think mm-hmm. you, you guys have probably have seen some people who have quickly came in and now, now this is almost routine for them. Oh, yeah. Uh, they don't even think about no. it. And their, their business has gone through the through the roof. Yeah. Um, I know I see Caitlin all the time. She does a little bit of social media. But I, mm-hmm. when I first met Caitlin, I was at the Board of Realtors in there, and obviously she was with her previous brokerage. Mm-hmm. So she's one of her your semi-experienced people yeah. have come over. Um, so even someone like that, because the structure that you have there is going to make you money. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think most people... If they knew, if I do this, this, and this, and this is what will come out, I'll make on the other end, everyone will do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. The only tangible is it's real estate. It's real estate. So you might do this, this, and this for a little while, you know, maybe market changes or whatever. Mm -hmm. This, this, and this, and this, and you're like, oh, I don't know if this is going to work. And all of a sudden... It works. All of a sudden, boom, yeah, you're getting called. Yeah. Now you're like, uh, I'm really, I can't even make my 20 calls today. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they do that deal. Yeah. yeah. I can't like, make my calls. And I'm like, think about the next 30 days. Yeah. Make your calls. <laughs> like, um, but, you know, and it does, you know, leniency is one thing from us, but it's real estate, like you said. So mm-hmm. it, just because I say, oh, yeah, you don't have to work at 3 o'clock. What about the seven customers that you're working with? They, they might require you to work. So the rest of the day is kind of, mm-hmm. you know, do what you need to do showings. We do, we wish all of them would come back to the office. Um, but we know that's not realistic. You know, they do have life things right afterwards. Or they travel and, and come back. Yeah. They yeah. travel. And if the office is 30 minutes out of, in the other direction, it's not super realistic, but mm-hmm. we, it's highly encouraged. Um, right. and we do have, you know, staff admin mentorship, what have you, they're in office every Monday through Friday, nine to six. Um, So if you do come back, you have kind of that extra support, that extra downtime, that extra, that's when you can do one-on-ones and stuff like that too. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's... So I want to go, so one of the, um, you know, I always jot down here several several things that are 
very commonly brought up by the top producers. Mm-hmm. Um, showing up is mm-hmm. one of those. Now that's a it's a wide that's a, a showing up could mean a lot of things like showing up to social, showing up, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, to, but you actually at or not you, but DJ in, in Lindsay Real Estate. Mm-hmm. These agents are required to show up every day. Show up. There is no at nine o'clock. You're uh, working from home. Although I do see Brett on there seems to be talking to some people who are remotely or they're just in the other offices. Um, they could be other offices or uh, like if their kids are sick. Okay. We're not like, you can't get motivated today. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. It's fine. <laughs> All right. We got to let Brett's motivation spread. Yeah, we got to let some of, them, <laughs> some of them slide. But yeah, usually, um, or our South Florida office, they're only... Um, we're transitioning offices, so mm. they're not all in office every day right now. Okay. So you'll see a few that are. So you have this requirement of showing up because, mm-hmm. like you said, when you you, you, you want those 20 conversations, um, it's a lot easier when you see the other people doing it. Or, all, you know, there's there's always this chatter. I've been in a call center environment. Mm-hmm. There's always this little chatter. And all of a sudden, someone says, hey, let's get on the phones. And then then, then all of a sudden, next thing you know, it's quiet, and everyone's heads down, they're dialing, and then all yeah. of a sudden, You'll hear people, people are walking different around. conversations. Yeah. yeah, the conversations start happening, and, mm-hmm. you, and you and you get that energy. And then I'm sure in those conversations that they're having, you're, the other people might be listening. They can hear them over the queue, yes. and they start getting I call it uh, mental ammunition mm-hmm. because it you know hey if someone's really good on the phone you might want to listen to that yep. listen in. I'm sure um, and uh, I'm sure you guys are doing that especially for new people. It's like hey yeah. you know sit here and uh, mm-hmm. shadow. Someone. I'll literally be like, just go sit next to Theo, go sit next to who you don't right. have to tell them what you're doing there, just work, but listen. Right, <laughs> exactly. And giving you and how to have that conversation mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, create the referrals or create the, the immediate lead. That, obviously, you guys put a lot of, uh, you know, you know, the first 50% of your day or at least 40% of your day is right there mm-hmm. uh, before noontime and getting that part done, showing up. Uh, getting mm-hmm. some coaching, getting you know, feel, getting the energy going, and, and stirring something up for the day. Like you said, what's good? and it could be 60, 90 days. You know, yeah. really, it just, you just don't know when someone's going to buy or sell a home mm-hmm. or run across someone who is, right? Right. Yeah. Um, so showing up, obviously, hugely important. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to go back to the question I skipped earlier because we, we started talking about uh, the the agents and their daily. Well, we didn't actually span. So as you know, say someone like Theo, uh, mm-hmm. Caitlin. They've been through kind of the in initial incubation period. I saw that word the <laughs> other day. And like, yeah, I, I saw someone use that word the other day, incubation. I know, it's was, it was actually, they sent it to me about my f- first couple months here at Lone Depot. Um, incu- <laughs> my first incubation. Um, they start, they're producing. Mm-hmm. They're, they're starting to get things done. So they still require that the 20 conversations. You still on top of them for that? Or you let them, you're letting them slack based on their production? Because obviously no, they get I mean, so many clients, they got out so many hours. They're in the day, kind right? of the ones that even set the bar of 20 conversations. Mm. The more successful agents, they just naturally have 20 conversations because they're working, their pipeline is building. They have people to talk to. It's harder for the new agents to have 20 conversations. So that bar is set by the Theo's, the Caitlin's, all the people that come in and genuinely have 20 people they need to talk to that day. Because they told them they were going to talk to them, or they just showed them homes, or something popped up on the market. Right. So they don't get any slack. We're like, now you really have to call those people. <laughs> Show up, call your people. I mean, and, and what a great power, you know, from the lead from a leader in that that you're not. You have these Theo and Caitlin's, and I'm sure there's others. We're just yeah, using those. I, I know those two. Yeah. So, um, they're doing it. They're doing it. They're doing it. They've seen success. Mm-hmm. Now they're now they got a high on it. They probably mm-hmm. want to do forty conversations. They, Sometimes they, they do. do <laughs> they just keep going. Yeah, uh, and they got a high on it. And how that bleeds down, or trickles down to mm-hmm. the new people because we all go through doubt. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure you get those new people in there and they're, and they're, and they're trying to get those twenty conversations, mm-hmm. and hard. it gets a little frustrating. Mm-hmm. And you got you, you know, obviously, no matter how much you told them, you're going to get frustrated. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to reach these certain points, but at some point, it's going to tip. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some people it happens earlier than others. It just, that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. Um, But to have uh, that in your office is so precious, I think. Oh, yeah. Especially us, myself, Brett, being out of production, we can't lead by example anymore. Um, It was easier when I was sitting there prospecting and I was having the 20 conversations. I'm like, if I can do it, you can do it. Right. And those numbers, 
are there because of doing this. So having the Theos, Caitlin's, Jamie's, Marcus's, all those people that naturally have all those conversations is super powerful. Let me define the conversation for a little bit. When when, when we say, mm-hmm. what would you, uh, if someone, you know, you had this checklist to say mm-hmm. you had 20 conversations, what is it that they need to have in that conversation to have it credited as a true conversation? <laughs> if they don't hang up on you, it's pretty much... Solid credit. <laughs> like, if there's two way, no, it's usually um, it's some type of progress, moving the needle forward. So mm-hmm. you know, and we're not super crazy about like what did you talk to them about. We just if it's some type of progress to getting them pre-approved, showing them a home, writing an offer, some type of progress. Mm-hmm. It's conversation. Well, some of these people, I imagine, you have to trickle on. You know, especially right now, some of them have pulled back because mm-hmm. of the market. So you might be trickling on them for the next six months mm-hmm. uh, before they uh, oh, yeah. decide to move forward or longer. Yep. Um, is it, uh, I guess, you know, someone who might be listening to the show mm-hmm. or listening to you explain this to them what um, uh, a conversation is? Yeah. Is, yeah. You know, are you, are you asking, did you ask them for, that, you know, if they knew anybody who might be, you know, are you asking for referrals? So there's some standard things that you want them to kind of throw somewhere in that conversation. Um, it depends. A lot of them have kind of gone back to calling their sphere of influence or people that have bought houses with them um, before. But a lot of them, it's educating people consistently, um, talking about the rates, talking about what that looks like for them, being very in tune with their life, their wants, their needs. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not we don't have a certain, you have to say this, then this, then that, you know, it's just the agents are pretty good about knowing the steps to take to get in front of them or to get them pre-approved, whatever that first step is. And then it just kind of trickles. Um, but yeah, that's definitely longer right now. Okay. They're having to get more, more touches. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in having conversations and, I, I'm, and I'm, I'm listening to your explanation of my question digging into mm-hmm. what does that conversation actually uh, mean? I, when I first got in the business in 2005, you know, Quicken, they, they put us through a, th- you know, everybody did 30 days in, in a classroom, mm-hmm. you know, learn about mortgages, learn how to, you know, do this. But obviously you don't know everything, Mm-mm. but they're giving you some baseline of, of education. The next thing is sitting on that floor mm-hmm. and you're, you're listening to other people who are, you know, been there longer than you. Mm-hmm. Um, you're obviously having trial and error, having conversations, mm-hmm. uh, in, in calling these these leads. What I'm leading into is how important is the education piece? Yeah. So we, um, well, we were kind of talking about this earlier. Um, when we bring new agents in, we do have an onboarding where we teach them like base layer contracts, um, what their day looks like, how to physically use the apps and the all that stuff. Um, but, you know, to us, the education is constantly like evolving. Mm-hmm. Um, so we don't stick them in a class for 30 days and think that they're going to actually know X, Y, and Z. Right. Um, we teach them some of the base, but our knowledge is out in the field so when they learn how to ask someone for their pre-approval there's a finesse in it you know but they Mm -hmm. know by probably failing a few times um probably getting their head ripped off a few other times and then you know so the education is very much um the glory of being with us is we give you all the opportunity and you kind of fail forward by doing um and you learn as you go so we we don't stick them in a classroom for 30 days and and we're not like lecture right Um, right but i can't believe you're i can't believe you just totally throw it you sound like you're you uh throwing them to the wind a little bit you've got to be (laughs) we do brett's got to be teaching them something oh no we teach them but we teach them more um like they're so hands-on with us for instance they'll get they'll get a lead and they'll say they want to see this property at one o'clock and we'll literally sit down with them and say okay let's do some research on the neighborhood let's do some research on the comps let's you know, right. learn as we go. Okay. Well, yeah, the, nut, the nuts and bolts of how to actually handle customers. Be an agent. And, yeah. Be an agent. Um, but when it comes to, and you, you've been in it long enough, the terminology, yeah. the, you know, uh, at St. Augustine, you've got, you know, what's an unwarrantable condo. Yeah. I mean, you got to know <laughs> what that is. Um, those type of things. How much time um, do you spend with them, or are you guys have in house? Mm-hmm. Um, are you you know you're setting aside so much time versus obviously yeah. going down to the board wherever they're at, they're in South Florida or mm-hmm. here or or whatever, um, going to board and getting that structured education for those newbies, those real green yeah. uh, people. 
I mean, are you taking time literally every day, maybe for the first three or four or five months where you're spending 30 minutes, an hour actually, you know, Sitting down. real yeah. estate 101 type Yeah, stuff? and we have probably two to three classes a week um, that do go over some of the beginning, more beginning stuff. And that's when we'll pull in a lender. That's when we'll pull in the title company mm. and we'll bring people in that really teach you those things. But we're so hands-on that we learn we're learning all day with them. They can call us and say, hey, someone's ready to write an offer. What do I do now? So it's very um, it's very in the field on call. I mean, we're on call at 830 to 830 mm. every single day of the week right. where they're learning with us. Um, but, you know, we, we did the more lecture style in the classroom, sitting there for 30 days and then putting them out in the field. And we're like, these guys are, some of them are ready in two weeks. Well, yeah. Get yeah. them out there. You, you, you can't, <laughs> um, uh, I, you know, they have to have something to, I call it stick to. Yeah. You can sit mm-hmm. there and lecture somebody and, okay, okay. You have to implement. And, yeah, they might not, it might be six months before that situation yeah. comes up and they go, oh, yeah, that's what they taught me back what, in the class. <laughs> right. And I, now I'm just, you know, it's coming to me. So, yeah, to to learn on the go, yeah. so to speak. But I, I, I guess I don't want to, I don't, I can't believe you guys are, you're not putting someone out there who's not ready. No. Um, they know enough to uh, know what they know and then know when they call you or Brett or whoever yeah. else is support, They call right? us right away. Sometimes right. they'll even three-way us with the customer. Um, we're partners with them. So it's very, very evolved. But, I mean, <laughs> they know enough to not be a liability before mm-hmm. we're just like, get out there. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Good luck out there. Well, how often, too? Um, I mean, you have such a large team and you guys are very in hand. Like, those first, you know, whether they're going – going out for a listing appointment for the first time. I imagine they're not going out alone. No, we go with them. Yeah. 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 yeah we go with them. All right. What are some of, I want to talk about you personally. Mm-hmm. When you first started, Lindsay calls you over to join the team. I mean, what are some of, what are some of the initial challenges that you had that, and, and you've been talking about some of these new agents, obviously there's a lot of stress under them because there's things they don't know, right? Yeah. That, to me, that stresses me out when I don't <laughs> when I don't know the whole picture and I'm going in, I'm like, um, yeah, they're very... walking, you know, lightly, right? So what are some of the some of the challenges that, that, that you had early and I mean what are your what are your daily challenges today? Um, so early on, I was I mean, I was very young. We're almost seven years in, so I was twenty three. Three years mm-hmm. old. Um so I think my age was a really big challenge, constantly having to prove myself, having to dress up, look, you know, look the part, act the part, be highly educated. So I put a lot of pressure on myself at the beginning to know everything, mm-hmm. um, either through DJ and Lindsay or just through just asking a lot of questions. So, um, y- you know, it was for me at the very beginning, the same of just like, hey, you don't really know what you're doing, but like, get out there. Don't do any, if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. Um mm-hmm call and ask questions and kind of work your way through it. Um, that was hard cause I'm a, I like control. <laughs> I like knowing what I'm doing. Right. Um, so it was very, but once I got it, I got it. Um, so you only had to tell me once and then I could figure it out and I could run with it and replicate it 50 different times. Um, now I'd say the biggest challenge now, I mean, obviously my career has evolved. Um, mm-hmm. so now I'm more holding people accountable which is tough um, because sometimes I might want it more than they do or, um, you know, it's, it's hard to manage so many different people, so many different personalities and be in it and still kind of be on top of it. Um, so that's been very challenging because um, I like to be in the in the mix of it. And so delegating some of that stuff is tricky. <clears throat> well, it doesn't matter whether you're 30 years old, 50 years old, um, you know, some people like to make that those hard conversations seem easy, but they are not. Oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah it doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> you may know the best for them. You've seen it. You've seen it in a very short period of time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you, you've had people that get it. And like I said, there's some people that just, you know, unfortunately they don't. You want them. Yeah, that's the want hard, it to me. That's, I'm that's like, you that could do this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those are the hardest ones because I, I see... I see that they can do it. They're capable of doing it. But if they don't want it, it that's, that's it. Yeah. They don't want it. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I know this, you know, from a turnover standpoint, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I, you guys must gauge that in your business model now that you guys yeah. are where, where you're at. I mean, initially you're like, hey, whatever, we're going to run through some people. But now 
you understand the cost effect yeah. of bringing in someone who isn't going to right. f- fulfill. Now, you know, mm-hmm. I'm assuming you guys already planned. Like, nobody's going to stay with you. Well, well, most are not going to stay with you forever. Mm-hmm. But, you know, what is that period of time that, that you need because of the investment you're putting into mm-hmm. them initially, the lead flow you're helping them with, and then, you know, there, there's got to be that, that gauge. So, mm-hmm. you know, when you guys are, I mean, what's an interview process with, with the DJs? Who, who do they start with? Are they starting with you, or how does that even? No, so they, um, even before they're licensed or when they just got licensed, we do um, kind of an introduction meeting with them, sometimes in a group setting, sometimes at coffee, um, and we have uh, agents and recruiters and whoever kind of brings them in first. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we usually do three interviews. I'm myself or Brett are usually the final interview um, or the decision makers. Even if I meet with them once, I still want them to meet with someone else Um, because it's, it's crazy. There are some really good people that they just do really good interviews. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So um, it's good to kind of sit down a few different times or, you know, the first interview kind of throwing them right at me. They're not really themselves. Sometimes they're a little guarded. Um, so yeah, we have extensive, we don't really let everyone in. We did go through a phase during COVID where we did let everyone in. Um, it, that was mainly based off of lead volume. Mm-hmm. Um, and for us, we always kind of have in the back of our mind, um, you can kind of trip and fall into a deal. Like, let's just, let's just get them here. Let's teach them what we can, give them the opportunity. They can do it. Um, so we did have a good bit of turnover during COVID. Um, it, it was mainly around when gas prices went up that a lot of people were like, oh, I'm spending a lot of money on gas. I can't, <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait another 60 days to get paid. And we're like, that's crazy because this is sales. Right. Um, right. But maybe, we're maybe very you need protective to Uber on now. Saturday night and, I'm uh, like, I don't figure it out. You started yeah. your own business. Like, yes, we're going to give you these things, but you still started your own business. You still mm. need some type of investment. You still need to be able to pay your mortgage for probably six months. Um, so, but a lot of people will just dive in and think, oh, I'll just, it'll be fine. Mm-hmm. And then we invest 90 days of time and money into them and they can't pay for their gas. Um, so it's, it was really hard during that mm-hmm. time. Now we've gotten really good at like, Hey, this is the money you need to decide. This is what your day is going to look like. This is when you actually get paid. And this is the dollar figure that usually looks like. So we've really nailed Narrow it, it down to, yes. pretty good. Yeah. Um, that, no more th- turnover. Once they're here, we want to hug them forever. Um, that that's pretty, that's, that's uh, uh, en- enlightening because I, I, you know, one thing I, I talked to um, uh, uh, Jennifer Henry with um, Game Changer, we were talking about because, you know, she's doing some coaching and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I really feel in what you, the numbers, like the numbers, you guys have probably broken it down to the science because mm-hmm. you, you've had these numbers come in. Mm-hmm. You know what, what you're spending. You know, you know what needs to come back relatively in a period of time as mm-hmm. far as deals and so forth. And, you, you know, although it's not a perfect science, you, you're, you're close enough. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really feel like some of these very new agents, they need to come in front of a, this is my, I, my pitch to Jennifer was this. To have a board of top people, brokers, mm-hmm. or, they can come in, they're not recruiting, and they say, I want to be a real estate agent. And those four or five people on that panel are going to explain to them. And then they're going to explain their situation, and they're mm-hmm. going because I really feel there are brokerages that are really good at totally green people, mm-hmm. or you have like an Engel and Volkers who doesn't want to hire. They don't want green people; they want people with experience, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And then there's a, some, a lot of brokers in between. Mm-hmm. And what fit? Where would they fit? You know what I'm saying? Obviously, your ideal agent. You guys probably have a pretty good idea what that is. Oh yeah. Uh, but like any business, like you're saying, you get a high, le- you know, a lot of demand, mm-hmm. a lot of volume coming in. You needed enough agents to handle the volume. Yeah, that's business. That and was a tough time. Yeah, and, you know, we have we have bosses too. You know, mm-hmm. Zillow and all these people. If they give us this, we have to convert this. So we needed a lot of people. Never again will we do that. No. Um, we're very protective of who comes in the door now, um, what that looks like, what you know, what we're going to do for them as well as what they're going to do for us. Um, well, we, well, okay. Well, you say you make, you make that statement because obviously you guys have had this conversation and rightly so there's situations where you, you, you'll need soldiers and need you, soldiers, lo- yeah. you lower the, you lower that threshold. You have to, because you, yeah. like you said, you have a you know business relationship mm-hmm. that has to be satisfied 
um, you know, the last three years spent working with a large builder in town. Mm -hmm. When they had demand, there had to be enough people going to answer those phones for yeah. those you know those calls. So, it's you know, it, it's it's a very it's a it's demand. It's going to be a demand on mm -hmm. you uh, for the rest of you know as long as you are in this position and stay in this position. Mm -hmm. You know, you you and your team to figure out what is that threshold. Yeah, and hiring the right people is always the. That's the biggest question mark of all. Biggest right? question. <laughs> there was just a right because a lot of your people are young and it's not like they have all this work experience. You're like, well, you know, uh, you have, you know, you spent five years or ten years over here doing that. Yeah. How, you know, a lot of your people, I assume, my right or it's are variety. Very young. Um, but yeah, a lot of people that they don't come to us with a resume. They right. don't have a resume. Um, but it's a variety. I'd say fifty fifty. We have a lot of people too. Mm -hmm. It's their second career, third career. A lot of. Um, different things like that. But a lot of them I'd say, um, come with some type of experience, mm -hmm. but we do get some fresh out of college that we're teaching them everything. All right. So here's a test question. Um, this is your challenge. This is because I, I we've, been, we've been talking a lot about, about DJ and Lindsay real estate. I want to yeah. talk about Brittany. <laughs> so, and you sound like you're probably like me. A lot of people you see sit in front of you mm -hmm. and you want so much more for them. Yes. You're like, wow, it'd be so great to help you change your zip code, whatever, yeah. you know, help you get a new car, whatever, yeah. you know, put your, send your kids to the schools you want to mm -hmm. send them to. What are some of the things that some of the, do you have some couple standard questions that you like to ask and see how they respond? Because I imagine, again, correct me if I'm wrong, you're in this role that they've, DJ and Lindsay have probably helped you mm -hmm. or sent you to people who kind of structure how you should interview because this is very important what mm -hmm. you do. And, you know, what are some of the things that, that in an interview process, what you, what's going through your mind and maybe a question or two that you, that you are asking? Um, I mean, by the time they make it to me, I just want to get to know them. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to, you know, I obviously just normal questions when you're trying to get to know someone, um, like about their family and what they do for fun, all that stuff. You should know those all the things. HR you should stuff. know. Uh, yeah. Well, you should just know who they are, right? right. You know, yeah. it's hard to it's hard to get that information passed when they've been on two other interviews. The information passed, and then feel like you know who they are. So I, I like to in our interviews when they get to me, they're usually an hour long. Um, so we're really kind of getting to know each other, making sure we're compatible. I you know do talk about their work experiences, um, what that looked like, what kind of challenges they faced. Um, but I, I mean one question I really like to ask is, you know, what kind of, whether they want to tell me in a dollar figure or in a goal, but like at what point it, is their life going to change and what does that look like? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them, it's when I can pay something off or when I can go on this vacation or when I can get this certain surgery or whatever it is. I like to know that they have some type of why and it's not just their kids. I'm like, well, yeah, every, everyone kind of breathes and lives and works for their kids right. um, in their family or their whatever. But I think a big reason knowing why they're going to show up every day um, or a few reasons are good that are a little bit um, easily attainable, I guess. Um, so some of them like to say, well, I want to pay off my house. And you can literally break that down. Okay, yeah. what does that look like? Yeah. How much money do you need to make? Because yeah. um, I mean, the average person, they, I mean, I imagine they come in and, and I think they do it in every kind of sales thing. It's like, okay, you want to make, one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Okay, what's it going to take? What to does get that look there? like to you? Why? Yeah. Why do you want to make that right. money? That's right. what I want to know. Why? 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 What is the actual Where did you reason? Come up with that dollar yeah, because um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a lot of them will come in and say, "Well, I want to make six figures." Okay, well, that's you can do that. <laughs> like, what's going to keep you showing up every day? What are you going to do with that money? Mm -hmm. um, what if you, What if you go out in the next ninety days? You sell four one million dollar homes. That should put you yeah. there, right? Yeah. What are you going to What are you going to do after gonna, that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We're going to get you to a hundred. Yeah. So yeah. after that, why are you going to keep showing yeah. up? Yeah. Um, Someone making is, less than a hundred at your uh, uh, DJ Lindsay Real Estate, I imagine, is probably not going to be there very long. Um, in, in a relative, I mean, yeah. I mean, I think most of them. Because do, in the their first twelve months, that you guys are doing, yeah. Because yeah. the volume, um, I mean, some of them do kind of run into a bad month here or there. Right. Um, so I, you know, maybe sixteen months right. if they don't make six figures this this market. If they're making less tough. than hundred, you're looking in to find out why and if What's they're going not. On? And they're not. It's because they're goofing off and yeah, yeah that or, you, they're not. That you got to cut them out of the program. Yeah. Yeah. Cut them uh, out of the program. <laughs> 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 they're human beings. <laughs> we try to. If they well, want it, we're going to make it happen. You you offer. You have to understand the value of what you offer. Yes. I think you do. Um, uh, 
and for everyone out there, the value of the DJ and Lindsay real estate team and, you know, Brittany and, and Brett running a lot of the, the day-to-day operations in, in the office and the structure and the ideology uh, that you guys have, you're, you're trying to create that plug and play. Yeah. But you got to have the right plug mm-hmm. to plug into it to get it to play. And, and not everyone is the right mm-hmm. plug. And in obviously, you, like I said, everyone you bring on, even though they're 1099, there is a cost of bringing those people on, leads they get that they don't convert and mm-hmm. you know, that sort of thing. So you got, you guys got to hire the right plug, yeah. and, uh, but you've set the processes in play, which makes you just priceless. Uh, and my, that's just my opinion. <laughs> um, we talked about your, your biggest challenges. Um, let's, uh, I want to go back we're talking, let's talk about Brittany. <laughs> so obviously D- DJ, DJ and Lindsay do a lot with, um, uh, Tom Ferry. Yeah. Right? I, mean, mm-hmm. I assume you're getting coaching. I've had multiple from, coaches. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell us, t- tell us how that's like, I mean, cause I think you tell me how it's it, 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 it's affected you. Mm-hmm. Do you feel because of the coaching, you know, you at, at thirty years old, leading a, the team and the volume that you're doing, mm-hmm. um, you know, you can sit in a room with any broker in in probably Florida. Uh, I mean, I can maybe, maybe there's some guys down in South Miami that sell five million dollar homes all the time. Maybe they're like a different level, but <laughs> I can't imagine the people. You, what you're doing, you're running seventy five agents. You're running this high volume operation. You're 30 years old. How has the coaching really prepared you to do what you're doing every day and continue to move forward? How, how has mm-hmm. it changed your career if you didn't have coaching versus the coaching that's been provided? You know, that- yeah, um, so I, I've i had a few different coaches all through Tom Ferry. And then, of course, you know, DJ is still day-to-day a really big coach, DJ and Lindsay. Mm-hmm. Um, but the coaches were more in tune with, me as a person um so i remember certain things they do because i'm a human too like i fall off too Mm -hmm. um and i have to have a reason or you know someone has to reset me (laughs) sometimes too um so you know they there weren't really any crazy things it was just more um talking to someone and getting words of encouragement and brainstorming and stuff that aren't in it with me um that was very helpful to someone that kind of could see from the outside how to implement certain things, and then circle back with me. Um, what, I mean, what about, that? What about a, a personal, your personal accountability? Yeah. Because as a leader, you're challenged uh, because you, you want to stay out in front yeah. of your people. And so you've got to do certain things to be that one step ahead. Like I'm yeah. sure Brett, he prepares every morning for his little yes. um, spiel. Mm-hmm. So he's trying to stay out in front. How have the coaches helped you stay out in front, you know, as far as your people, the industry? Get tough accountability. Yeah. <laughs> tough accountability. So, mm-hmm. you know, I've even had coaches tell me um, at one point I was, to me, I was kind of failing. I was like, I can't keep up with this certain thing. And they said, every single day, text me when you finish that text. I'm never, I'm not going to respond to you. But if you don't text me, we're never talking again. And I was like, oh, oh God. Wow. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, this, this is it. Like, this is the last. Because he believed in me. He knew I could do it. It was right. just physically getting myself up and doing it and every single day. And it was it was something very simple. And I just, it, it was, was more. It was the frog, right? So things it, about eating the frog. Yeah, it had nothing to do thing. with the actual task. It was just believing in myself to do right. it. And he was like, well, if you don't believe in you, I'm done here. Right. And I was like, oh, wait. <laughs> like, wait a minute. I, can, I believe I could do this. So, you know, it's just having that person kind of on the outside, which to me, mm-hmm. daily level is, is DJ. Um, DJ will always, and I get very frustrated sometimes. So I'm like, DJ just beat me to that. How did DJ see that before I saw it? Um, but I, I'm just tough on myself. Mm-hmm. But, to, it, you know, it's because we're doing the same tasks. We kind of have the same bird eye view of everything. Um, but he holds me on regularly accountable to my leaders when I'm teaching with them, when I'm implementing with them, um, and how they're putting it into play. Um, uh, just um, amazing stuff. Um, you, you, you gave me a thought there. Mm-hmm. I think one of the, one of the challenges, like I said, I mentioned earlier that a lot of top agents is hiring that first assistant, right? Mm-hmm. Relieve them of, of just some of the tasks that have to be done when in a real tasks. estate transaction mm-hmm. and so forth. And, the, you also mentioned duplication. Mm-hmm. You you guys were early. You said, hey, why don't we just hire, we can get 10 of me. We can mm-hmm. duplicate me 10 times, bring on more volume, et cetera. And how, 
um, in your opinion, from where you're at, the fact you said DJ saw it before me. Mm-hmm. Was it? Do you think DJ saw it before you? Because DJ has the ability because he has you, he has Brett, mm-hmm. he has Travis, and so forth, to stand out at, at thirty thousand feet when you yeah. look down. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, you know, so he's he's up here, and I'm a little bit lower, and I, you know, it'll be simple things, but I am very, I immerse myself too much a lot of the time and I'm very in it with them. So then I miss something from above. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. you know, that's one of the things that really I struggle with when it does happen. I'm like, gosh, you know, that I knew that was going to happen. I saw it. I just didn't do something about it or make it recognizable before mm-hmm. he did sometimes. Um, and sometimes you don't realize someone else actually saw it. So you're like, oh, so no one else saw it. I, you know, I missed it. <laughs> no, I'm always now, like, God. But now all of a sudden someone's like, hey, you know. You, you I'm like, to, I should have should have known yeah. that. Because you know, we are <laughs> thinking so far ahead. We're always thinking 30, yeah. 60, 90 days ahead. So, you know, something as small as if the agent isn't doing the activities Sometimes I'm literally sitting there with the agent and they look like they're doing the activities, but because I didn't get that bird's eye view, I didn't, you know, I missed right. that they're not doing the activities. Right. They, right. They're thinking they are or they're trying to, but they're not hitting they're it. Going through the motions just to, yeah, to get to the clock yeah. to tick over and say, yeah. oh, hey, I got to go home. So he's, he's yeah. always in, you know, constantly my coach as far as how that goes of this is what's going on. Um, he's the same as me, though. He tries to immerse himself a lot. <laughs> uh, get get involved. Well, because because he, he, I mean, obviously they love real estate. With right? passion. So yeah, he's so not going to get out. <laughs> they love, and then they, they there's always that thing too. Um, you know, us older guys, we want to show that we can still do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I think he's not as old as me, but um, but that I mean that that is I, I, I think you know, the success that you guys have had um, and and. You know, it, it, it could be the DJ, Lindsay, Brittany team. But I'll just say that. <laughs> our real estate. But the fact that they have that, and, and, and Billy Wagner talks about it, the greats talk about it, you got to have that time. you got to step away. Mm-hmm. He's working on his business, not in his He has you working in the business. Mm-hmm. He's working on the business, yeah. and that's why he's able to, to guide you and keep you going in the right direction and hopefully remove any pitfalls, uh, mm-hmm. you know, holes in the, in, the, in the road that you might might hit. Mm-hmm. Um I always we talk about surrounding yourself by great people. It sound, mm-hmm. you know, obviously you have some great people in the office, but is there is there anyone you know? Tom, obviously, I assume you listen to some Tom Ferry because you guys are very involved in, in his coaching. But is there anyone that you know? Do you pop around and listen to different people, or is uh, is there a book of the week that you guys <laughs> you know that's um, suggested? What What do you do? Oh gosh, I mean, I kind of have my hands in a lot of different things. It can get overwhelming sometimes to tell us, like, oh, man, I haven't read a book in a while or I haven't listened to something new because I'm just so busy. Yeah, well, yeah. right now I'm trying to finish my continuing education and all that stuff um, that I didn't realize is due. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I literally am telling people to do their stuff, and then I'm like, oh, gosh, where's my that. person? Who's mine? <laughs> Who's <laughs> over there clicking who does, for me? Who does that for me? Yeah. Um, so I haven't been able to read a, a ton lately, but... One that I always, uh, if we're going to go books, we'll go book route. Um, one I always like to read and I always refer For agents the, to read it is The Alter Ego Effect. The Alter um, Ego Effect. Yeah, that yeah. was one that really helps helped me a lot at, at, in the beginning was figuring out um, how to be who I need to be versus just who I am. Um, and strengths in business, strengths in all kinds of different areas of life. Um, you kind of put on this alter ego and a few people that are in it are like Kobe Bryant, um, Beyonce, all these people that have this kind of person that they turn into um, when they're working um, or they're playing or, you know, so that to me is a really good Hmm. one. Um, It's a really good book to try to figure out like, okay, this is who I am. How do I implement that into who I also need to be in business? And then how do I turn that off? Um, Is there, do you feel, I mean, you feel you're two different people? If we were in your backyard having a cookout, you'd be a different person than you are. No, right I'm pretty normal, but I think it's because I also don't You're have normal. my game face on anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to. I don't have to get out there and you know perform. I don't right. have to get out there and try to um, sell something anymore uh, mm-hmm. necessarily. But the agents so, do. Okay, well, well, because you're in an, in a management position. Yeah, you I'm have, more you're, you're true. having tough conversations yeah. or you're trying to be mm-hmm. the encourager, you're doing the trainer, you're being all those things that, that you need to do on a daily basis. Um, the agent themselves, do you feel, uh, I hear a lot of people talk about, it's important 
to you know the, the social media shows a lot of your personal stuff to show people who you are. It's very important to be yeah. real. Yeah, you know, I mean, especially really. in my position, um, how it's evolved, it, the empathy side and all of that is really big. Mm -hmm. You have to really connect to people. Um, but I think that's also in sales and in business, if they're not really sure who they are or what they like, or it's hard to connect um, mm -hmm. with other people. So, um, I, I mean, there are tons of good books. The um, Never Split the Difference was mm -hmm. one that... I was obsessed with because I love negotiating. Um, how to win friends and influence well, that, people. That's, that's a cornerstone. Right? They're all, yeah. you know, there's there's so many books. I think just finding the right one at the right time. Um, DJ did put three books on my desk last week. <laughs> 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 you guys should read these. And I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I keep my license first, <laughs> and, then <I'll, laughs> and then I'm gonna read those. Um, um, but and I don't have a lot of driving time anymore. Mm. When I was an agent, I was obsessed with podcasts because I was driving all the time. Right. Um, it was so much easier. And now, you know, when I think about sitting down and reading a book, I'm like, I there's there's a lot of stuff I should be doing, right. um, but I also should be reading and educating and learning. Are, are um, you are you the type of person? I mean, are you show are you show up at seven thirty in the office? I mean, what what? So what I you, um I am I show up at the office every single day between eight and eight fifteen because mm -hmm. I had like a show up by eight and God forbid I hit traffic and it's eight oh one it would like I'd spiral I'd right, be like oh my right, gosh right. um very like type D in that sense so I'm like between <laughs> eight and eight fifteen like yeah. that's my comfort zone right um but I wake up early in, um, I just have my own time where I don't really talk to anyone, even my husband. <laughs> um, but he works from home. So he, he wants to chat in the morning. It's the only time to socialize. Um, yeah. Cause but, you know, it's funny that you get home and it's like, you just want to mentally check out. I mean, yeah. yeah. I drive I in silence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, that's my time to like comprehend what the heck just happened to me that yeah, day. Exactly. Um, exactly. And then I get home and you know, that's when I spend time with Kate, my husband, but, um, I mean, there's, I'm in so many different little groups and different people that I follow. Um, Tom's mm -hmm. obviously a big one, but I usually start with Tom and then end up different places, um, whether it's articles or different influencers. Or, right. or um, if he's having a guest on his podcast yeah, or something, then I, lead you off to... Yeah, to then learn. I'm all over. All right. we're Because we've been, we've no been going on here, um, and we definitely could we could talk all <laughs> afternoon. Um, as I change this, I particularly change this question, obviously, to you being a broker now versus a, in production. Mm -hmm. And um, it, let's just, there's someone out there who's, you know, heard us talking today, heard how things are structured at, at, at DJ and Lindsay Real Estate. They're interested in you, but they're coming to work for you. You're the broker. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, although, I, I mean, would, would you agree uh, I don't, again, you know, obviously, I'm not in your office. I don't know. <laughs> They're going to see more of you than they are DJ and Lindsay. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Hundred percent. So, yeah. um, tell let's uh, sell. Uh, you're on. You're doing a record. You're doing a recruiting video, <laughs> for example, here, and just sell people on what makes Brittany Nolan a unique and accomplished broker, uh, and why someone should come and follow you. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Did I mention I don't like talking about myself? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I think, I don't think I can give all credit to myself for anything or any mm -hmm. reason that I'm here. But um, I think uh, a real reason to work for me uh, is actually for us. You say work with you. Work, work with me. You, yeah. yeah. Um, work with me. But it's also a lot of it is given to Brett and Travis um, because they're even more hands-on than I am. But I think uh, I think our our passion for real estate is really big. Um, you know, no one DJ and Lindsay never told me I had to keep showing up to the office every day. Um, I just wanted to be in it. I wanted it to be with them. Um, I wanted to go through it with all of them, and I wanted to be very hands on. I want to know our agents. I want to know their struggles. I want to know um, who they are and and why they show up every day. So I think kind of that hand to hand combat. I think people even forget sometimes I'm the broker mm -hmm. um, because I'm that involved. Like they can call me on a Sunday if they have a question. Um, we have boundaries, of course. Everyone needs them, but mm -hmm. um, I think just kind of the passion of wanting, really wanting them to be successful. That is my success. Um, that's why we structure the way we do. We don't have agents that aren't successful. Um, everyone is selling real estate. Everyone is selling, you know, upwards of 20 homes in their first year. Um, so working with me is just more of a partnership than just kind of someone above that's just kind of hanging out and making sure, uh, you don't get us sued. Can I, uh, 
to in in clarification because of what I'm visualizing and how you expressed yourself there, uh, and I, I can only imagine you know to, to for people to be able to do that kind of volume and be new, mm-hmm. um, they need you. Mm-hmm. To come in just as DJ, make sure you know there, it's yeah. a smooth, as smooth as road mm-hmm. as possible for you, so you can keep doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You're you are involving yourself and in not letting you know our our a real estate transaction can be a bumpy road. Oh yeah. If you uh, if it doesn't have one at least one bump in the transaction, <laughs> I mean, go play the lottery. There's yeah. always something. Seriously. Uh, yeah, a repair or appraisal or le- or the lending side or whatever it is. There's always something, and mm-hmm. and then you know smart people to get together and they get it corrected and get it closed for, mm-hmm. for the most part. That when they come and work for you, you are you are are overseeing them to make that transaction as smooth as possible because mm-hmm. you want them to be out there getting the next one and yep. have the greatest confidence in the world that they could say, mm-hmm. you know, hey, I've got the breast broker we've got the best processes mm-hmm. we we've 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 got the best uh you know vendor list to work with mm-hmm. lenders and all the other jazz all the other people that support and that because i've got Brittany. it's a partnership on my back yeah or not on my back but has my back has my has back, my, yes. has my back. That's and it. i always say that to mm-hmm. them i mean that that is something i literally always say when they first start like don't worry about failing because i have your back you can come back mm-hmm. to me i can try to fix it or if i can't it's fine too um but yeah it's very much working together but with I can't credit Brett and Travis enough. I mean, they, it's more of me seeing or being immersed with it. And then, then adding their special touches with Travis on the process side or Brett on the coaching side. Um, we all collectively make sure everyone shows up and does the activities. So it's very, it's a group effort. Well, I, I think, um, you know, going right back to the original part of our conversation, having people doing what they do best Mm -hmm. and Travis and, and Brett, and all three of you supporting each other to make sure every transaction for every real estate agent goes through. Mm -hmm. And obviously your volume, uh, you know, is, is, is the tail of the tape. I mean, that, that, that really tells it all that you guys are really good. Uh, even with the youngest of of greenest of agents Mm -hmm. to the most experienced, you guys are, you're after it. You're not, you're not overwhelmed with, uh, stuff that is not your strength, right. uh, and, I'm, and I'm sure you guys complement each other. Obviously, we do, you know, yeah. in your in your mm-hmm. in different areas. All right, we're going to wind down. I call my two minute warning questions. <laughs> um, what's your favorite? You and uh, what's your, your husband's name? Cabe. Cabe. Mm-hmm. What's you and Cabe's favorite thing to do in Northeast Florida or St. Augustine? What do you guys just love doing? Oh gosh, um, so. We'll talk about right now. We're building a house in St. Augustine, so mm-hmm. that's our new obsession. Um, we bought a house on, on the water there. We run it as an Airbnb, and then we're building. So um, we're pretty easygoing people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we don't do anything too elaborate. Um, but honestly, I think travel is one of the things we love doing, even if it's like a weekend trip. We've been bad about it since COVID. Um, right. But uh, our dog is is our world, Loki? <laughs> I, do, I did see that in one of your bios. It says, Sen and I have a seven-year-old lab. Or seven year old, that, seven-year-old that might have been lab. Old that's my baby. Everyone's <laughs> like, do you have kids? I'm like, I have a dog. <laughs> I am 75 children. <laughs> um, right. But, uh, you know, we do, do a lot of things with her. It's kind of random. You mm-hmm. know, we'll... Do you guys have a favorite restaurant in town that you frequent? Um, What's your... What, no, it depends. No? Yeah. Are you, are pretty, you restaurant people? Or you like to just, you just He's not so restaurant D. Um, right. And it depends. He will go somewhere if there's live music. That's kind of his thing. Like, uh, okay, okay, cool. Yeah. If we can grab yeah. grab a drink and listen to music, I can rope him in. Um, but sushi, we always love good sushi, Thai. Um, I've been recommending that that new, oh, it's, it's, I don't know how it's a couple of years old now, that, that, that new St. George Inn that you took over uh, the pizza place at the end of uh, St. George Street. Was oh, uh, it's right across from the inn. What's that called now? Uh, it's, it's it's called the St. George Restaurant. I think it's what's oh, called. Oh, I haven't been. You need to go in there. Yeah, that's that's really nice. Really good. Yeah, yeah. yeah really good. Really good um, food there. Yeah, I guess all we're right. pretty boring. Well, all right, here's the last and final question that I've asked on all 95 episodes: <laughs> Is it more important who you know or what you know? Oh. Oh gosh, I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> so I not watch well, the end. Well, you got to start listening one. to my podcast. I know. Uh, apparently, Brittany. I didn't watch and listen to the end. Um, I mean, I think a combination of both. You need to know the right people, but you need to know the right things. Mm-hmm. 
So <laughs> no, I'm not gonna. Well, there's there's no doubt you don't you, you can't be incompetent. You can't be um, incompetent. Yeah. But uh, I would say in your, you know if I was looking at your career for me it's being you had some people that saw right people. saw your potential or whatever or gave you a shot and you've taken it. Yeah. So you knew the right people, but you're no you then learned what to know I to. Learned the right things. Yes, or be willing to listen, be willing yeah. to follow their their lead, so to speak, and yeah. and and all the rest. And and I think, you know, as I said in my intro, um, you know, you're only thirty years old. I, I there's another thirty years and beyond, and unless you got unless you decide to move from St. Augustine <laughs> or something. But uh, obviously, you're 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 going to become a pivotal player in the decades to come in in the area of real estate. I hope, um, yeah. You know, you might not get any as many speaking gigs now, but I imagine in due time you're going to be getting calls where people are going to want you to come and present yeah. and, uh, and and express. You know, how if not nationally, I think, you know, uh, a lot of these, uh, you see a lot of these conferences around and some of even my podcast uh, coach I was talking to last night, he's going to invite you to speak. You know, the what you're doing, uh, people are going to want to know what's going on inside. Yeah. You know, there, there's the flash out front, mm -hmm. you know, hey, yeah, advertise, whatever. But what is actually going on inside yep. to keep that core structure, you know, humming all the time, you know, retaining uh, uh, employees and stuff. That's so vitally Big important. Thing. In yeah. I mean, success. going on seven years, I've kind of kept my head down, haven't really put myself out there. Um, mm -hmm. And then I changed my name, so it really hid me for yeah, a while. Yeah, they hid you for a little bit. No one knows to find you on LinkedIn anymore. Yeah. I appreciate you coming yeah, on. Yeah, I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, you so much.